get to understand the nature of the spirit with whom we have to do. So I only move when he moves me. Trust God for tonight. But a lot calmly, but um, allow him to increase the intensity. Do not end this quiet. Let's be seated for 10 minutes. Let me build a prayer point. Um, okay, my, my name here is wrong anyway. My name is Tolu Aluko. Whoever did this flyer should please. I'm not about to change my name. Amen. When I walked in, our father was speaking to us from Genesis chapter 1, and we want to try and build a prayer point from there. And then, um, because I know that there are a lot of speakers, I will try and paint a picture of the Holy Spirit as the living spirit. That's all I'm going to do. You can join me, sir. You can join me. Genesis chapter 1 and the first two verses. Somebody on the screen. In the beginning, okay, so have you, you heard me preach before? So you know what to preach, or you are just guessing. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you have been a student of scriptures, one of the things that you'll have found out is that this startup for a book in the Bible is replicated in John chapter 1. All right. So that in John chapter 1, you have in the beginning was the word based on deadlines the beginning in John chapter 1 is earlier than this because the beginning in John chapter 1 was the beginning of beginnings Genesis chapter 1 is actually the beginning of our age you will find out why I'm going into that it's not proof of knowing the Bible said that, go back to Genesis, in our beginning, what God did was that he entered into a creative enterprise. And there were two things that he acted upon. Or there were two products of his labor. The first was that there was the emergence of the heaven and the second was the earth. So that foundationally to our age, there is a way that God is introduced and is introduced foundationally as what? A creator. Are you with me? Maybe I should tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing. The reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is that um, in relating with God, one of the foundation stones for accurate relationship is the stone of identity and so if you don't know who he is the court sees that are worthy of his introductions will not be administered and um, you can get on his bad side it is not accurate knowledge of god to think that god is ju just smiles every day the bible gives us a picture of a god who frowns are you with me okay so that um, I am my wife's pastor. And it means that when I stand on the podium and I'm preaching, there are certain courtesies with which she will relate with me, even though I am also her husband as her pastor. When we get into the house, there are many faces that I can bring into that relationship. So if I'm trying to discipline my son or my daughter, um, 
she may feel that I'm too hard but what makes her come softly is that I'm not only her husband I am also the father of her children are you with me it's the same face but cognitive knowledge of what identity is functioning is what predisposes you to relating with him so that even though God is your father and when he comes as a father you become a son and in interacting with him if he tells you to do something you can negotiate say but it's too hard you find out that when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane there were two faces of God that operated he began with the face of a father he entered with the face of a king because in father mode sons have the privilege to negotiate in friendship mode because you can be a friend of God you have the privilege to negotiate Abraham pioneered that in Genesis chapter 18 but when the face of God shifts and the problem is you are not informed when the change happens when the face of God shifts from a father and it becomes a king what you say is not my will that's how you relate with him because in that mode he comes as a master so identities are foundational to the success of relationships just as it is with men it also is with God that's why we need to understand God's foundational introduction and it is as a creator amen as two and the earth was without form and void and I don't have all the time because I don't even know how much time I have um, I feel a little bit comfortable so when I'm comfortable like this I can stretch but um, I know you need to sleep Abby okay the concept stay with me the concept of the earth being without form was not that the earth was out of order because all of you are facing here and that's a form if you turn all your seats and face that way you only be without form because there is a prescribed form are you with me so in case somebody says that your life is not following the divine pattern it does not mean that your life is not following a pattern so when the bible says that the earth was without form what it meant was that the earth was operating in rebellion are you with me is keep all those things in your heart the person i want to introduce is the holy spirit are you with me okay so the earth was in rebellion and it was void the word void is also a relative word to describe something because that cup there can you help me upturn it man we can say that this glass cup is void but science proves that it's not and if you attempt to put water in that cup what you encounter are bubbles are you with me bubbles are proof that because there was no deliberate content air moved into it so a formless earth will actually be an earth or oh, oh, sorry a void earth will be an earth that does not have God's required content it's not an empty earth now, that was the shape of the earth the third thing was that darkness was upon the face of the deep the word, there are words in the Bible that mean different things to us and mean something totally different to God one of them is darkness because you find out that in the third verse God decides not to first address the formlessness or the voidness the first thing it tackles is darkness because to us darkness is the absence of light to God darkness is the absence of life how do we know because when God said let there be light it was not the Sun that illuminated that's Genesis 14 a 1 14 to 16 it was not the moon there was something that God had 
that had the capacity to illuminate that was stronger than the visible light. It was a mystery until John began to bring perspective that in him was life and that in manifestation that life became the light of men. So we understand that when God said, let there be light, he was not summoning something that was outside himself. He was summoning something that was within. And the only way earth could interpret life was illumination. Are you with me? So if light is actually one of the revelations of the life of God, it means that darkness is one of the revelations of the absence of God life. I'm being careful with my introduction because in trying to define the Holy Spirit, many times we, we build into the things that he gives. So we talk about his power. We labor around his intervening capacity. And we forget that he is not an experience in God. He is a person. Are you with me? It's because um, our father was speaking about, and I hope it's okay to call you that. Our father now. At least our father now. <laughs> okay. Um, he was talking about, you know, all this long praying thing. I have my own issues with long praying, but tonight is not tonight. It's good, but it has to be expressed within a context. It's like generating energy without purpose until the purpose is added just logging it but it's good it's good to start at that point you know to set the clock and pray for 50 hours for 60 hours it's good it's good to pile up prayer because those of us who are coming to teach that those things are not we have banks of hours are you with me so we'll be cheating you to make you feel you just walk into it it's like me saying don't fast for no fast for more than 10 days. My longest fast was 15 years. So I will be cheating you to think that you can enter into the same reality and say fast for two days and stop. Are you with me? Okay, you don't like what I'm saying. Okay, since you don't want it, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Just like God foundationally was introduced to the face of a creator, the Holy Spirit was also introduced in his foundational activity. And that is his most dominant activity. I know that when you seek direction, your focus is in what you will show and what you will say. Foundationally, the Holy Spirit is a moving spirit. Are you with me? It means that the one who wants to understand the spirit must trust God for the tools that can pick movements. He doesn't speak much. That's why many of the answers we need for the things that we want maybe you, you, you want to marry for example and you, you see a sister that you like and then you now say Holy Spirit well I don't know what was taught in the house so let me not damage it in my world we don't raise the issue of marriage with the Holy Spirit until he raises it are you with me so if you are 40 and he has never discussed marriage with you before you are not supposed to ask him yes now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord means a servant has no will. You don't have choices. It's a prayer point I want to build, but I'm trying to show you the protocols of relating with this spirit. The Lord is that spirit. I know you think you need a car. If his lordship does not generate that need, it means it's not a need. You want 
a first class to what end servants don't operate like that so it was introduced here as the spirit of God and there are a few things that hang around that first is that is the spirit that came out of God so the Holy Spirit is the divine essence all that God is towards us is what the Holy Spirit comes to establish he is the executor in our realm of all of the names of God are you with me he's not lesser than God that's what's the false meaning of Spirit of God is everything that God is and it is he who communicates by experience what God is Two, as the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit is that spirit that only serves the purpose of God and that's dangerous for the believer who thinks that the Holy Spirit is an errand boy it means that the Holy Spirit is not committed to advancing you primarily he is committed only to advancing God so the assignment of the believer who wants to operate under the influence of the Spirit is to discern what God is doing and align with what God is doing because the Holy Spirit is only strong in the service of God are you with me when I was younger and I'm not too old I'm just in my early 40s um, I used to when we we're serving I, was, I served in my degree I used to have this young man beside my room who wakes up at 5 a.m. and plays very strange music okay stop until we pray the sound is good but the song is wrong so wait for me he used to play one strange song from 5 a.m. the speakers are no longer around that time Sony made a speaker this one is it 10,000 watts speaker they call them monster some of them are almost as good as our normal public address systems and it's part of the home theater so Kelvin had two he will put them at his door and at 5 a.m. he keeps playing the song all of us learned that song because we heard it too much and subliminally that's below our consciousness we embodied the song so one day I now found out that meanwhile the song is not even it's a secular song or a world it's a worldly song but it's not even an exciting worldly song it's it's like the sound of a depressed person the theme of the song is the word lonely okay you heard the song before okay okay so that's what he plays at 5 a.m and he plays it till we all go to work so one day i now held hands with my roommate and we cursed his speaker asking the holy spirit to destroy it after about three four minutes the speaker went off and when we sought to find out at daybreak a flame broke out of a speaker now at that age we advertised potency but growing up i know that the holy spirit does not do that kind of assignment there are more redemptive ways of helping that young man because the young man was really lonely He had spent his whole youth service following a young lady who was espoused to a young man in Germany. So that towards the end of youth service, the lady now confessed that I have somebody I'll marry. So that became a song. There are more redemptive ways of doing that kind of thing. I'm trying to say that because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God that's how he was foundationally introduced he only operates in the service of god he means he cannot do what god is not doing so if we check don't believe me but it is true you can start from prayers and your errant spirit will be a strange spirit i mean you're asking god to do something god is not committed to doing but because you insist the realm has a way of answering your prayer but if you check you find out that it was not God that generated the result 
Have you seen ladies who took other persons' wives or who took other people's husbands? Some of them entered into their reality by prayer. Lord, I want him. Lord, I want him. Lord, I want him. The family breaks. They marry the man. You think the Holy Spirit operates like that? No. Okay. So one of the things we pray for is discernment. The reason why we must know him based on the nomenclature that scripture used to define him is that there are many spirits in operation and the church currently is not immune to the invasion of spirits in the day that you seek counsel you will find out that except you have mastered me not only the discerning know that i was not there when god spoke to you but because i know god he does not talk like that are you with me Is it impartation service? Jesus. There's a way my spiritual father raised me. He said, even if Tolu, you want to impart people, you must preach. Doctrine is what gives life to impartations. What I mean by life is what gives longevity. Because you trap graces. In instruction that's why I'm starting this week so that's how your preach because it's also the Spirit of God on a third layer then we we'll pray the Holy Spirit comes or operates in the believer with the authority of God it means that he is actually a Lord in himself so we refer to him as the King Spirit because it's the Spirit of the King it means that in maximizing his energies or his potencies you will need to learn how to kneel more than to speak because he's a king it's not under your control if you cannot control God then you cannot control his spirit it means the rest of your life if you want to maximize him will be lived by receiving instructions from him that's what makes you strong with the Holy Spirit so that for our brothers, sisters are more, are more humble. So that for our brothers, when you go to a meeting, for example, and you find out that the person that preached before you fell everybody to the ground. People say that that's power. The older you grow, your heart is cured of certain things. Because the average person thinks if God moves in a meeting, all of these chairs should break. Why should I create liability for you? That comes with age. And then the older you grow, you are more concerned about what happens to the people than what is physically visible in the meeting. Are you with me? Okay. So that when the first person fell everybody to the ground, and after your session, you reserve 20 minutes to also four people, the Holy Spirit can say, just say in Jesus' name and sit down. I've had experiences like that. I even had one in the battle, and the person who came after me, I had two sessions and after my first session i closed with a prayer and sat down and the young man a minstrel came up and said you know all these people that talk talk is cheap so that you know you're supposed to do something and in my heart i was like oh god they said you should come to sing they didn't tell you to come and judge me so he said now when i begin to sing you see that all this place will scatter so i reported him to god in my heart what he came with was power relationship with God and sustained fellowship it gives you an upgrade of power that's what we call authority so in authority I said on my seat nothing moves here so he labored for one hour and when he got tired he sat down so during my second session I now gifted him 15 minutes to cure him of his pride to tell him there are things you don't do when somebody who has a relationship with God is in the house no no he is Lord and so you cannot maximize him if he's not Lord to those who sing praise and worship because he's Lord it means you can't wish your song list are you with him even people who worship Shango, they have special. You can't sing a many men to someone Shango. Abi, can you sing a many men blessings and glory? And Shango comes out. No, 
Shango has a list of songs. And those who want to summon him must sing his list of songs. When they sing, Shango must come. When it comes to the Holy Ghost, when you sing your songs, you will wait because he's a king. It's, it's not, it's not. When we have done all that we know how to do, we wait. That was why in the day that he was going to come, Jesus gave the protocol in Luke chapter 24. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem, stay long. He comes only when he wants to come. Are you with me? So there were 500 who heard tarry ye. There were only 120 in the upper room. Maybe the others got tired and they went to eat during the feast of Pentecost. So he came when they were away because he does all things according to the counsel of his own will that's the holy ghost is somebody with me okay that's the foundation i want to lay here so in all of his shapes what he does is that he moves he moves every time he begins to move there are encounters that people begin to come into and i perceive that tonight he is intent on establishing encounters, not just here, but many of you lifelong. Yeah. Yes, lifelong. So we want to ask him. That's how you approach a king. You ask. And then we ask in faith. So you want to take a posture for maybe like four minutes and ask the Holy Spirit. You are the Spirit of God. You are Lord. I asked for a meeting with you. You can ask him now. A meeting with you. So you can play now. You can play now. Try again. Play, play, play. I ask for a meeting with you. If you pray in tongues, you can approach him, not aggressively, but like one who is expectant. Oh, Holy Spirit. Come, 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 sweet spirit, come. Come, come, come. That tonight you will isolate us for encounters. We may be seated together. But like you stopped Saul. On the way to Damascus, there will be interruptions as we journey. As men become isolated in the midst of the crowd. Dealing with things that you need to do on personal notes. We ask that you create an awareness. An awareness, a menofe at a DSI. That beyond the cerebral knowing, there will be migrations into places in the spirit where your realities will be established. Breathe upon us. Beyond the things that we know that you give, we know according to the speakings of Jesus that it is only you that is licensed to give life. So we ask that tonight you bring us into encounters with life. Let everything that is ordained to live, that is dying, begin to live. Let dormant graces begin to find expression. Let anointings that have gone to sleep be quickened. Let dreams. Let tools of perception, the hearing ear, the seeing eye, the hand that understands, let them be quickened. Oh, let capacity to prevail be administered by your life. We have too many small that like a river, like that river, you will take us from depth into depth. 
until we are out of control and we are born by your streams holy spirit what a female let all the nations come to life let that which the enemy has suppressed in death experience a resurrection for you are the living spirit oh my 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 just one more minute Just the keyboard, just the keyboard. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. 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 Emo sees of an are back to Kaile. Sabino Ferranto Yanata. Sabogre tele badre felete. Soy felato. You are here like a deepening river. Carry us, carry us until we are overwhelmed by your essence. You are here, you are here, you are here, you are here, you are here. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Okay, so the Lord is saying to me that before I go into scriptures, there are nine very desperate people in the building. Very desperate. These individuals have stumbled on a need for life. And that I should ask him that he should give life even before I begin to open scriptures. I don't know where they are seated. I don't know who they are. Four of them, amongst the many reasons for which they came into this conference, the Lord is saying that they understand that they have callings, but there is much opposition. And that what he will do is that he will breathe upon the four of them and he will give life to the energies of their colleagues. There are another two among the nine. This nine, these two rather, have been given the capacity to see into the spirit, but they have been restrained. And so what he's doing is giving life to sight. He's giving life to sight. He's giving life to sight. The remaining three of them, what you look like in the spirit is a burning touch. Jesus is sending you to lands. But the enemy has resisted you. Now it comes like a breath from heaven and it blows upon that lamp and it begins to burn stronger. It begins to burn strong. It begins to burn strong. It begins to burn strong, very strong. So, Holy Spirit, help me find the nine of them and also as if you find them, please bring them to God's servant. He will lay hands on them. You just showed me nine of them and I'm asking that you will find them. You will, you will cause that flame to burn brightly. You will touch their eyes and you will breathe upon their dying ordinations. Yes, your hand is strong. Your hand is strong. No, no, don't bring them here. Don't bring them here. Take them to God's servant. Take them to God's servant. They are just nine. They are just nine. They are just nine.
Oso sana toya. Resusina vahai. Bring them, bring them. There are nine of 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 them. Lord, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch all of them. Soda rehanaya sata. Out of the morning to where I'm ordained for things that were made, were made from things of sin. So Jesus help us find that final person. come at the end but Jesus. if you can if they can stand please just send them back if not just leave them there Dying, come back to life. Let bring her, bring her, bring her. Let what is dying come back to life. Let what is dying come back to life. Let what is dying, let it come back to life. All right, amen. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Please let's have as many people as we have to just so that I can I can minister. Uh. Sorry, ma, is it safe to pray outside? Okay, so if you feel like praying, some people's service has ended. You just go outside and pray. Amen. Second Corinthians 13 14. Help me. The grace, stay with me, stay with me, uh, please, uncle, help me lay hands on that brother that is praying, uh, just lay hands on him, okay, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of 
of the Holy Ghost be with you all and the church says stays long there the thing will multiply that's the problem Ooh. all right if you have been in church for a while you may not have read this verse in scriptures but you will have seen a church service summarized with these words the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship that's the same word rendered there communion one of the reasons why this benediction has become very important to us thank you mas god bless you is because they were the last words of Paul to the church in Corinth. According to the demarcations that we saw in scriptures, there were two epistles that were devoted to the church in Corinth. And like an aged father who is about to pass away, Paul decides to congregate in one verse the threefold experiences of the believer who has come into the economy of God. In this one verse, we see clearly expressed the three members of the Godhead, and each of them advertised with the reality or the dominant reality that they bring to the life of the believer. So that your encounters with the Lord Jesus are built into grace encounters are you with me when we use the word grace grace is like a coin how many of us have seen a coin before okay there's nothing in nigeria now that you can even buy with a coin except to come with a sack all right a coin is decided is designed to be a two-sided essentially two-sided um object Grace on one side is translated unmerited favor. And that's what we refer to as saving grace. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace were ye saved through faith. So that's saving grace. But you see, the ability of grace to save, that's to redeem from eternal perdiction, um does not fully define grace because if you go to hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 you will find another assignment for grace that grace is also a service oriented tool the bible says we wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace and this grace is not foundationally to save you because the audience here is of those who have received a kingdom already are you with me so the bible says let us have grace and the assignment of that grace is so that through it we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear it means this grace is service oriented so it is no longer a merited favor it is what we call supernatural ability for example um, if you are a pastor and you have a very robust life in studying the word you may be able to preach for 52 Sundays and still preach unto guilt. The reason is because Jesus advertises a blessedness for his servants who do that kind of work. And what brings them into that blessedness was captured this way. Blessed is that servant who his master finds faithful 
how does he define faithfulness bringing meat to his household in season it means if you study genesis chapter one today it does not mean that you should come and preach genesis chapter one because genesis chapter one may not be meat in season are you with me so you will need a tool more than study to be able to preach accurately you will need a hearing ear that can make you capture what is the current revelational emphasis of the holy spirit for that audience maybe you found out that i've moved away from my note it's because i'm trying to angulate myself into what the holy spirit is doing so i didn't arrange what happened here meanwhile what are what happened here is not ministerial are you with me oh see all of us like to sleep in the night so and i can sleep on a chair so if you want me to sleep i'll just tell baba to give me cover cloth here i'll sleep and there are good chairs there i'm saying that there's nothing ministerial about what i've done if you listen carefully what we're doing was we're praying and now said that he showed me are you with me so what i was what i operated in okay mama wants to lay hands on them thank you ma so it was because he showed me and all i did was to believe what he showed me and as proof of believing having the same spirit of faith we have believed and so what do we do we speak so i just said you showed me that they are desperate people i, I didn't nobody is wearing desperate on his head so what i need is a supernatural ability which can manifest as sight by the holy ghost so i can know what he's showing you don't like direction sometimes it's that he has showed you you don't just have tools to see what he's showing because your two eyes cannot see his direction are you with me so that's the other side of grace all of these abilities the saving and the day-to-day -day living experience of the believer that is built into grace like our father just told us living the life every day is at the instance of the ministry of jesus the christ so paul says that the grace of the lord jesus christ jesus is the person of grace that verse introduces give me back my verse the second thing is the love of god and love is built into not just affection it has to do with the desperation that ensures alignment when you have children and they do something wrong with well based on the laws of nigeria you can beat your children i, I guess good when you beat them your chastisement is also an advertisement of affection are you with me i'm saying that because there are utterances around mostly directed at those who are just coming up in god that advertise that a god that loves cannot chase him are you with me when we begin we don't see his chastening side but as we grow we come into it so you find out that when john the revelator was given the privilege to write his epistles he divided the body of christ into three parts he called us children he called others young men and then he called them fathers you find out that the experience of children as expressed in his letters was consistent i write unto you children because you have known the love of the father that's what children know so if i'm taking my son to school and he says ice cream the only reason why he will not take ice cream after school is that his nose is running and i will need an explanation so what i'll likely do is to look for a product that is hot and then switch you see but when he grows up 
it won't be built into having money or not we'll always have money but i'll tell him no ice cream this week and that's it because he has to learn that what god meets is need not what i write unto you young men because you are strong and the word of the lord abides in you on the second side he said i write unto you young men because you have overcome the evil one when he spoke of fathers he said i write unto you fathers because you know him that was from the beginning it means before you are called a father in the body of christ your knowledge of god must not be contemporary you must know god from that beginning that we started from so you have extracted the faces of god in his dealings with his children israel and you don't you understand that that god in new testament doctrine did not change are you with me that he chased in that time he can still chase in now he rebuked that time he can still rebuke now are you with me but all of that is summed in a dominant reality what god comes to market is love one of the loudest verses in scriptures that advertises that is john 3 16 for god so loved the world he could have done every other thing about the world but he decided to advertise himself in expression i love the world so god loves the love of god but what we want to sit into is what we call the fellowship of the holy spirit and i don't know how many of you have sat down to ponder on these subjects because if you look at the verse you find out that the arrangement of that verse give me my verse second corinthians 13 14 you find out that the arrangement is seemingly not non-biblical because in the normal arrangement you see god before the christ so what paul did was an attempt to bring his audience into the living experience when you come to god the first person you meet is not god it's jesus that you meet first and you meet him in his grace capacity when you come into the kingdom you now begin to understand why grace was given to you it was because at the back end of grace is the love of god however the sustenance of your journey is supposed to be by the fellowship of the holy spirit you know every day we look at the same scriptures they have more meanings when i came in i was doing some writing because uh, there was something i was studying when they came to pick me when i came in the afternoon okay you were with us in the afternoon man i went on the immediately they dropped me i went on the prayer walk it's my way it's been long i've ministered in shagam i think about four years ago so i don't know the atmosphere again so i had to go you release words into the atmosphere you threaten whatever is there that will not make you do your work you signal to god you sent me i've reported duty and then you press into all the things that are available for you to do ministry that's why this stage is like my stage now in the boomer shop are you with me i'm comfortable so but you see um the day and the night is clearly segmented in the realm of the spirit there are different things that move in the night and this night i saw shagam in a new way i had to call my wife to say this city is scary so i walked from my hotel you know where i'm lodged now i walked to the bridge so i was just praying some people greeted me but i think people know me so if you know me i walk fast so that not disturb me you know when i now got to the bridge i walked on the side of my hotel and i went to the other side and now saw naked people okay how many of you have passed through that area before man even in lagos they don't dress like that ha. at a point the place where i passed they were lined up like this lined up like this and they were talking to everybody that was passing so when I came in, young man, young man, customer, I said, me, customer. <laughs> customer came. But you see, a weight rested on my shoulder, on my, on my heart. 
a weight it was me mourning for many young men who will be wasted by passing through but i need to tell you how i passed i'm trying to say that common scriptures have deeper meanings the verse that came to me was yeah though i walk to the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil listen for thou art with me thy rod and staff they comfort me so i saw that even though they had all these very sharp eyelashes and all of that they could not affect the state of my soul and the lord said let me teach you comfort again when you are comforting somebody what does it mean the person is sorrowful the lord told me that the concept of comfort is built into preservation that's so that what i experienced there that immuned me not because they were everywhere it means it was in the atmosphere i even saw one young man with a with bundle of money counting money maybe he was trying to to purchase a commodity and if you know scriptures that way is the is the gate of hell nobody except jesus is desperate about you nobody goes that way and comes back is the end so i understood it was the value of the shadow of death but i saw that i didn't feel threatened it's not because we are strong maybe that's what you market no 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 my strength is in the consciousness of my vulnerability for we are not sufficient in ourselves to do these things our sufficiencies of god are you with me there is there is a personality that god has brought into fellowship with our spirit and even when our strength ends instead of crashing what happens is it's like public parts of life goes off and instantly it's like you have a standby generator automated instantly a generator is even late like you have an inverter the design of the inverter is that your light should not blink so people can no longer separate between how strong you are and the holy spirit that is at work in you have you read the scripture here that is joined to the lord is one spirit it does not mean that your spirit is the holy ghost if we put water in the anubaya tank and we join we connect from the top with a plastic pipe and then the tap is a metal pipe so it's plastic and metal they are distinct in quality distinct in every other thing the question is which pipe drops water in the bucket the plastic or the metal the metal you are sure uh -uh. you the metal is useless if the plastic does not bring it that's the joining it is so that your life can begin to express the strength of the holy spirit to a point that people mistake his strength for your own so when they ask you a question there's a way you answer and everybody says wow we didn't know you were this wise it's not you because your wisdom bank has become one with his own somebody comes with deception as a lady a young man comes and said you know in the dream i saw you, you were carrying an umbrella the rain you know those all these rain stories that's why i raised our ladies in the promo shop don't wait for a brother to come to go and check i don't know that kind of god i don't even know where the doctrine came from that the brother comes the sister is now going to pray because in the beginning it was not so eve had her own separate relationship with god and when god brought her to adam adam recognized her and eve did not say let me go for three years i tell sisters if you are deaf you are deaf time doesn't cure deafness are you with me i'll go to ask god bro if a sister says you go to pray so that you not waste your time ask have you ever heard god on another issue because some people have never heard him before and so marriage will not open your ears 
Are you with me? I'm not insulting you. I'm just saying the truth. Because some brothers are getting old already. And the sister is still going to ask a God that she cannot hear. So back to my experience. I now send to my wife. I say, hey. Ah. Shagamu. <laughs> But you know why there will be pure men in town? The Holy Ghost. And it's in those extreme cases that, that the difference is made. Your purity becomes a statement that you are making. So that beyond Jesus loves you, the life of a wit the, the reality of a witness is a living experience. Are you with me? There are times when you'll be given the privilege to share it verbally. But even if you are tongue-tied, your life is still a testament that God can keep men. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that's what I want to build into. Jesus gives grace. God administers love. But the Bible says that the Holy Ghost administers fellowship one in Genesis it was called the Spirit of God what is it called here the Holy Ghost and I've had people struggle with the multiplicity of nomenclature by which you identify the same spirit so what I will tell you is that foundationally is who he was introduced as in Genesis, Spirit of God. He wears the name Holy Spirit because there is need for demarcation. There are evil spirits. They need to look for his most dominant reality. And what he advertises most is holiness. What is holiness? It's not essentially the absence of stain. That will be purity. Holiness advertises the reality of separateness. It means the Holy Spirit is distinct from all other spirits. He is separated only to God. So he serves the purpose of one audience, God alone. So it's called Holy Ghost. So you want him to be strong in you? You will also choose separation to God. Are you with me? Okay, if you don't follow again, we'll just convert it to an invitation service and we'll go home. You know the invitation is easier. Abi? We don't even you do you don't even need to pray. It's easier. I just need to find a way and I, I have a way. That's why it's playing the keyboard. Sound is my transport mode. So as long as he's playing, he'll be telling me things and we'll just go home. But what God wants to do, like our father said, is to release proof producers so that it doesn't look like the minister of God is a babala of some sort. All of us can walk in the same realities. Maybe I should tell you a story. Is that fine? Because Baba used plenty of stories, so it's like who likes stories. A few years ago, precisely 2019, I started itinerant ministry gradually. I met my spiritual father in 2016, December. So 2019, April, I had a teaching meeting for about 20 students in the University of Illinois. I had packed my bags, I had prepared my notes, it was an evening meeting, so I was to leave in the afternoon, rest, and then go for the meeting. And then at about 9 a.m. in the morning, I got a text. That's how Apostle Ome sent us an assignment. It was actually a WhatsApp message. The message read, Futa Akure, 5 p.m. today. That was the message. What it meant was that by 5 p.m., I must have reported to Futa. That's it, Akure. What I will do there, he did not say. 
if there was a meeting there he did not say so instantly i called the people in the lorry i'm not coming again no. papa sent me an assignment and i packed my bags if you know the way to akure there's a place they call owena so when i got to owena and i told him papa i'm almost there who am i seeing now he now sent me a jccf flyer and i'd never done jccf meeting before and the number of the president so i now called the president my name is Tola Bola. Apostle Romel will not be able to come. And you may not understand what it means to represent Apostle Romel in a meeting. You may not understand. And I know you know how to teach scriptures, but when Papa handles scriptures, you are wondering, is he reading 10 Bibles together? So, I now call the president. I remember his name, maybe Benga or something. Apostle said I should re represent him. And I said, no, Apostle said he's coming. He has traveled though. He said, okay, we don't even know you. Can you preach? So I said, small. What else can you do? I said, I can pray a little too, but I can sing very well. He said, okay, we'll give you 35 minutes. Was it two hour session? We'll give you 35 minutes to do what you can do. So I got to Futa Gate. And by the time I got there, it was raining. And they left me in the rain for 40 minutes. The problem was that I was nameless. I'm still not popular, you know, I'm just me. So, I now stood at the gate in the rain for 40 minutes. I now managed to enter one small cafeteria. And they forced me to eat for food because they told me they would send me into the rain if I did not buy food. Thank God I bought food. Because that night, I suffered. Stay with me. My suffering was built into the fact that on this side of creation, I didn't have a name. Unknowing to them, you can be nameless here and be known before God. Because what gives you capacity with God is not just that you are saved. It's that you have labored into who in the Godhead administers what. So my relationship with Jesus is built into the economy of grace my labors into the realities of the divine affection are built into how i relate with the father and the holy ghost is the master of fellowship and the proof of fellowship is not that you sang a song the proof of fellowship is that life came are you with me so every time you sit down in the morning and read your bible and you say i have fellowship if there was no giving of life fellowship did not happen it means every time we meet with the Holy Spirit, we leave that activity, not His presence. So we leave that spiritual activity as an upgrade. Every time, life must be delivered. So why do we stay long in prayer? It's not because God is dead. We wait until every ounce of life that was committed to that prayer time is delivered. That's why we stay long why do we stay with one song you saw what mama was doing the other time uh, i've seen people sing eight songs in 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 15 minutes before it's because people don't know that when a song is sent from heaven the song is a messenger it comes to give life and you must stay until you have fully emptied it of life when we find out that a song is no longer giving life that's why we change to another one are you with me so anyway they came to fetch me don't worry I'll tell you the whole story I know that you like story so it's good uh, so they came to fetch me they carried me in their bus they put me in the lodge and told me you have 35 minutes anything you know how to do you should do so I preached for about 25 minutes they now sent me a note that ah, you're pretty well we increase your time to 50 minutes I've suffered. You know, I don't even have big stature again. Like Babana, he has big stature. You know, he's a pastor. If I wear jeans and t shirt now, you think that I'm still in school. Okay. So at the end, I now said, Well, Jesus said he will heal a few people. Because that's what he told me. I'm so dependent on that fellowship. I don't even market myself as a powerful minister. 
he said he will heal four different things and i mentioned the things and people came out testimonies one lump disappeared some other things done in the body ah, that lump disappeared and said even myself i was surprised this thing happened so they now saw that ah it's like this young man too has something to offer so he now whispered to me when they were taking me back that there's a lady who ran mad and they brought her to see her can we bring her to you tomorrow morning I see madness. Let me ask Apostle. So I now called the medium pick. I typed, Papa, they brought a lady mad from Benin to see you. What you do? He said, Pastor, deal with it. Madness, not my grade. In the natural, I felt that I was going to be disgraced. But because fellowship, is available it means that if I stay long enough I can download reality from the Holy Ghost that's what it exists for what cures madness is life you call it power but you see all that we need are products of life are you with me so if you have life you can produce power if you have life you can produce glory that's the merchandise of the spirit it is the spirit that giveth life the flesh profited nothing so i stayed up all night began to pray like 10 p.m in my room i was pacing in tongues lord should they bring should they not bring should they bring should they not bring at the point i now have faith that this thing will work so i told them 11 a.m tomorrow bring the person at least that will give me enough time to change my mind so I continue praying, I continue praying. At about 1 a.m., the Lord now told me, can I tell you how she, ran, she, she became mad? I said, tell me. And so my dictation class started. And it was dictation, because I was writing. The Lord told me she's not freshly mad, though. she ran mad eight years ago. It was as though I literally went to where it happened. The grandma was a witch. She was at the brink of death. I needed to transmit the craft. The craft entered the lady. She didn't have spiritual capacity. She ran back. Okay, now I know the cause. How do I cancel it? Said when she approaches onto you, you find out she has a signature body odor. It's like they mix plenty gutters together. They now rub on somebody. So from afar, the odor will be strong. She said, Tell them to follow you to this same room. I was sitting on a chair writing. Tell her to sit on this chair. Immediately she sits. The odor goes away. The madness he come. Now whisper to her ear. Just one word. Go and the spirit will leave. And she'll be saved. So I wrote my script. What else will you do in the meeting tomorrow? He said, tomorrow night I will cure 13 things. Can I have a list? So I wrote my list from the room. Moving objects will leave the body. This will happen. This will happen. I'll do this to eyes. I'll do this to ears. I had a list. I didn't need to be creative. And I asked him. There are 13 things. Which one will 12 rather? Which one will you do first? He said, This one. When will you do it? I will give you a song at about the 40th minute of your sermon. When you sing that song the third time, I will start healing them. Maybe you learn that ministry is hard. No. As I have received of the Lord, so also I give to you. That's ministry. It means any day you don't receive from the Lord, if they put a microphone in your hand and tell, they tell you to preach for two hours, just stand and watch. That's where a minister eats. If you enter a canteen, if there's no food, there's nothing to serve. Are you with me? Creativity is what has made ministry become difficult because men think that the minister of Christ is a performer. No! ministry brings you makes you a servant of the holy ghost so when they came the following morning at 11 the jcl president entered was the called place researchers lodge in Futa. he said the lady has her note i said bring her bring her you know that's a confidence you have immediately she entered the city room the odor everywhere I said, let's go to my room. He said, Pastor, you'll not be able to sleep in your room. Sit down on this chair. Immediately she sat, according to the word of the Lord, order disappeared. I whispered in her hair, go, go. She's gone back to school. She's even married with children now. 
Now, somebody will say, ah, powerful man. No. That was what Nicodemus felt about Jesus. You are special. You are a teacher sent from God. And that's a very strong qualification. For no man can do these things except God be with him. Jesus now answered him saying, I'm not in a class, an exclusive class. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. What was Jesus pointing at? Jesus was telling him, my potency is not built into power. My potency is built into a kind of life. If you are born with that kind of life, you will also be able to do the things that I do. Your problem is that you were not born well. You have a bad defect. Your life is measured into impossibilities. If you have the new life, you'll be able to operate in full. Are you with me? The new problem is that there are people who have the new life, but they don't understand that the flow of that life is built into communion with the Holy Ghost. That's what he loves most. You can give all that you have and even borrow to give. What he enjoys most is communion. It means one of the most important currencies of maximizing the Holy Ghost is time. Can you pay that price? So you are praying and after three minutes you hear clip what's up i did pray i pray i did pray so you come back show and i mean you're going in and out of prayer what's up and god i have never received a phone call when i used to pick phone calls in prayer i've never received one that changed my life Somebody just goes, ah, Tolu, it's a long time. Long time? He said, I'm praying now. Because the enemy knows that the currency is time. Most of the instant miracles I've seen, at least of late, was because I stayed. The every person just said, you are healed, and walks away. Many times that prayer is not heartfelt enough to occasion change. So we stay sometimes i'm just quiet for long they are healed sometimes it's typing you are healed and just as i mean you said it time somebody say time in case you do love languages that's his love language time sit it i'll shine a few weeks ago i said there's no verse of scripture that you cannot understand the problem is you spend too little time with the verse of scripture once you read it and you don't understand it you go to the next one no what we do is that we stay we stay you pray small you come back you pray small you come back it was written to be understood and fellowship can guarantee understanding that's the holy ghost anyways the lady was fine the 12 things that jesus said i was going to do also turned out well so they stopped inviting apostles and from the subsequent year, I became the face of the GTCF. So, so I go to Futa virtually every year. My anchor was on fellowship. He has intelligence reports that I don't have. And in fellowship, what happens is that I can share what he has. There's this system we call in, in IT, we call it file sharing, right? You use things like, um, what's that X? Um, Zenda. Yes, that's what fellowship does with the Holy Spirit. So if somebody says, do you have a Bible with concordance on your phone? And you don't have data to download it. You can still have it. The way to have it is not to buy data. The way to have it is to engage a file sharing app zender right you just need to look for somebody who has downloaded and then transfer to me so is that file transfer thing that's how the sick get healed 
that's how dead men have been raised that's how blind men have seen and deaf ears have been opened that's how the scripture is preached that's how we stay long in prayer because the new testament the economy does not provide potency in man it only provides potency in fellowship it is in that dimension that we are brought into what i called the living the, 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 the experience of the living spirit who has a smartphone because i want to round up you are, you are feeling sleepy already no boy who has a small phone a small phone a small phone okay bring the small phone some people's small phone is big phone uh -huh, so. can i have another phone please collect your phone uh -huh. ah you are a rich person you have big phone and small phone okay now this phone is not a living phone and you will not know when you have gotten used to this one, which is a living phone, one day you want to do something on this phone and you mistakenly tap the screen. Does it happen to you? You will now find out that the screen is not interactive. So it's not a living phone. Meanwhile, this phone is designed to be a living phone. It has password, have you? Why do you give them password phones? I don't know. Anyway, it's good. So. When you tap the screen, you find out that it responds to you. I'm trying to describe what fellowship with the Holy Ghost looks like. What the Holy Ghost was sent to do was to advertise the interactive God. A God that you can relate with. So that as a student, you may be in the hall. And we used to do it in school, we don't know answers. If you ask somebody, it will be cheating if you ask the Holy Ghost is not if I knew half of the things I know about the Holy Ghost now because by the time we got to 400 level most of our questions were multiple choice questions it means none of us here should, should miss anything the average believer will tell you that if the answer is C and he chooses B something told him that the answer is not B yes or no the problem is that you have not given a name to something and because you have not named it you can't trust it the ladies who entered oh, I come and collect your phone how many did you give me two collect the two phones everybody see me <laughs> the lady who is in the wrong relationship right now cannot tell us that when she was going to enter Something did not say this guy will be beating me. But because we leave it at something, and what I've come to do is to make you understand that without your permission, because you have given your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit already begins to function as the living spirit. So that even if you don't take counsel from him, he's already flinging counsel at you. The reason is because one of his dominant assignments inside you according to paul in romans chapter 8 verse 14 is what is to give guidance as proof that you are a son of god for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god and you must awaken to recognize him that this is god interacting with me i'll share you the testimony i went to an Ambra state to preach What's today now? Friday. I mean, Saturday morning. Okay, it happened last week, Friday evening. I went to a meeting. I finished preaching two hours, sat on my chair. And then we are still looking for the protocol guy. So we don't know if it was a real person or it was an angel that came. I sat on the edge like that. And I saw a lot of pastors from the East who wanted to talk to me. But this person walked up and said, I just saw somebody stand and say, Daddy, let's go to the hotel now. Ah. The normal thing is to say, who talks to who like that? But at those words, the desire to talk to those people 
died immediately. I packed my stuff and went out. That guy did not follow me to the car, so I don't know if he was a human being or an angel, but I didn't see him anymore. I got into the car. He drove me to my hotel. They took the car back to the venue, and immediately my horse left and he was kidnapped. So by Saturday morning, they had called and said they need 30 minutes. So I now sat down. Well, he's, he's, they've, they've released him anyway. So we bless him. He came out, I think, on Wednesday. But my shop, so, so maybe this evening now, Baba will have told you to contribute money. Maybe that's what we'll have done this evening to say, ah, please, our guest to oh, Ejadao uh, uh, The savor was that someone came. And even if it was a human being that came, there was something within that connected with that utterance. When I got home on Sunday and I saw my wife, I started crying. Because I was like, ah. So in church, when I shared it and I was crying and worshiping, I saw the way they were worshiping. So I said, let me just preach. You can't understand. You can't understand. His wife had left for home. They were just waiting to retrieve the protocol car and then drive home. And immediately got out of the school gate, they picked him. The men were so bold that I had to tell them, don't do that conference again, cancel it. And because they canceled in the morning, by the time we'll have finished the following evening, the people came back and picked some other people too. God is interactive. It will, it will be a waste of time to just tell you how powerful the Holy Spirit is. You heard that a lot. Oh, how strong it can intervene in troubles. You've heard that a lot. The need of the hour, because the world is becoming more spiritual. The man who knows Shongo is gaining mastery of the ways of that spirit. So the believer must also labor into mastery. If you are expected to give an answer now, is there a technology by which you can draw an answer from the Holy Ghost now? You will not always have three days to pray. There are opportunities, young people that are coming your way and the opportunities come with a sense of urgency. Do you know how to get an answer from him now? where we're laboring into because life will not always give us time and maybe you think it's just for those who are in ministry people who go to work need the Holy Ghost me I've even gone to preach before and I wanted to sit on the chair and I heard the Holy Ghost say if you sit on that chair it's inside church <laughs> if you sit on that chair I know what a young person will say, greater is he that is in me. No, no. God not only preserves by power, he also preserves by wisdom. There are bosses you must never enter. And even if you are paid, he can tell you, come down. Can you hear, come down? Are you with me? So the labor to give expression to our life in Christ as by the Spirit is to press into the things that make us pick his signals in case he does not have time to talk to you one of the most common movements of the holy spirit is what we call peace right so you want to do something you want to sign a contract and you hear people say i lost my peace too many times people have told me to define that peace you can't define it only the man who experiences it can define it but that loss of peace can stop you from entering a relationship you can even pay for your ticket you're about flying to Canada because you think that is greener pastures and then you can walk away from the airport because your peace was lost now you have time to interpret it 
And so what he told me to come to tell you is that he's a living spirit. He's not a tool. He's not like a fork. You know a fork is not necessary until you want to eat yam. Are you with me? Every aspect of your existence is supposed to be built into the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So I teach people to rehearse it. So I'm sure you have more than this black cloth and your cloth is fine. Do you sew? You sew? Okay, but you have a good tailor. Tailors have suffered me in a lifetime. I have one that if he spots the cloth, I say you are spotted, he will say we'll sew another one better. You have more than this cloth, I mean. Good. Why did you wear this cloth? Because you just like it. You have to learn not to wear clothes that you like. You have to learn to wear clothes by instruction. You know that thing that we call favor? On this side of eternity, I mean in the visible earth, favor is caused by many things. You walk into an office, you want to sign a contract, you wear green. The last person that your guest saw wore green stole money from you. I, I, am I saying something? These are living experiences. He now says, Ah, I want lots of green. <laughs> and cancels out. You have to bring him into every little thing. My wife was not my friend when I married her. Because the Lord advertised to me that the Holy Ghost is a Lord. So you don't marry who you like, you marry who you are given. And then when he gives you the woman, you will now ask the one who gave the woman to you to make you love the woman. And he answered that, that request in two days. When he showed that to me, I didn't even know her name. I just know that she used to come to church. Now we are the best of friends. We love each other. And I think I even love her to an extreme. But we're not, we didn't know in the beginning. That's how life is supposed to be lived. Because every aspect of your life is built into a witness. He is the living spirit. And as the living spirit, he not only gives life, he is God's face of interaction with you. Maybe you've been standing in the gap for your family, as we're going to pray now. There's an affliction in the family. Do you know that just praying for that family may not be enough? There's intelligence in the Holy Ghost. I went to preach in a nursing school some years ago. And I remember that the topic was consecration. Labored so much and in my consecration class like that, you will draw a list. Everything that you have, you will now consciously offer them to Jesus. Because many times when we sing, I surrender all to you. There's no list. Are you with me? And if there's no list, the song is a lie. So when I saw his list, I saw one school uniform, one shoe, one phone. That phone, the back of the phone was gone. It was a rubber band that bound the battery to it. What I saw in his sheet was poverty at its highest expression. So when he was walking me back to my lodge, I was poor to ask him the question, bro, why are you poor? And I said, no, there's no money in our house and all of those things. So I told him to, have you been praying? He said, yes. I said, okay, don't pray this night, I'll pray. I don't like people serving me. That's why I carry my stuff myself. Because if you serve me, you, I now owe you. It means there must, something, there must be something that I have that I will give you. So I spent the night praying. And this is what Jesus told me. His great-grandfather, yes, his great-grandfather had a season of need and went to one of his own friends and lent some, borrowed some money. The Lord didn't tell me how much. A time came when the owner of the money came back because he saw that the borrower had become wealthy and said, my family also has a need. Can you return what you have borrowed? And the new rich man now said, me, I never collected money from you. 
So the village came together and spoke ill of the man. If you have a need, beg from your friend. You are lying that you borrowed money from him. They sorted it. But the man went to a court in the spirit, a witchcraft cover. And then they ran their checks. You know they can investigate. Did he borrow money from him truly? Or he borrowed money? What do you want to happen to him? He said, let his descendants be poor. So this boy grew to know his own grandfather, who is the son of that great-grandfather, poor. His dad was a pastor. He died sick because there was no money to take care of him. Now he has managed into nursing school. But his life reeks of poverty. So when I told him the story the following morning, he said he doesn't know about it. I said, call somebody in your village. So he called his mom. His mom said this is the first time she's getting to know that grandpa actually borrowed money from anybody. The answer was in the Holy Ghost. Every time they asked to be free of poverty, a witness rose in the realm of the spirit to say these people are poor legally are you with me god has power but he is just and every time that voice comes up the way god saves us from those situations is that the judge now tells you the accused how to win so i spent a second night praying it was my protocol officer so I prayed second night and the Lord now said the way is restitution that man's name must be repaired I didn't have too much money that time I still don't have too much now anyway so I gave him 2,000 buy bread or plantain so he bought plantain I think 1,000 transport to his village that time was 400 now go come so he had 200 now to buy water on the way Go to the family house and tell them you are the son of so 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 person. I God said that truly, truly, grandpa lied to hell. Cut the long story short. That guy is a nurse in the US now. When I saw him after two years, I saw him in the lorry. He had become so wealthy, even in Nigeria, that he called his hair. So his hair was now jerry coiled. The secret was not praying endlessly. The secret was the knowing that the Holy Ghost is a living spirit and that you can ask him questions. He knows when your bloodline had issues. He knows how to correct it. There are four individuals here. Your parents are in ministry. And the ministries are troubled. Tonight, as we begin to pray, I want you to ask him why. Because there are answers in the Holy Ghost. He will give answers. There are four. There are four. He will give answers and you will begin to see the turnaround. This year, this year, he will reveal what is wrong to you. And as you are aligned with the demands of God, you will see those family situations shifted in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been sent to campuses. I don't know how many you are. And you've been trying to break into those campuses. He told me to say to you that you have been praying. Now you need to know why those campuses have not been penetrable. They are answers in the Holy Ghost. He is the living spirit. So when we begin to pray, you will ask him, Lord, how do I prevail? And as he tells you the answers, the demands, and you follow his demands, things will shift in the name of Jesus. Let me close. There is a dimension of the Holy Ghost that the church is more accustomed to. And it's captured in Psalms chapter 103, verse 7. That's where I'll close from. Psalm 103, verse 7. That verse of scripture advertised one journey but two classes. The Bible says 103, 7, 7, 7. Help me, help me, help me, help me. He, speaking of God, made his ways known unto and his acts unto 
what was the classroom the classroom was Egypt to to Canaan right so they were in the same class it was one teacher but on that one journey Moses was learning the ways of God Israel was knowing what in every congregation there is a Moses company there is also a children of Israel company the children of Israel company the only thing they want from the Holy Ghost is interventions do it Lord do it Lord do it Lord do it Lord unfortunately the reality of fellowship advertises more than the reception of interventions it advertises partnership the Holy Spirit wants to invest his energies inside you so that you become the face of his new activity are you with me so that if he wants to communicate to the world he can speak through you if he wants to help your family he can help your family through you there are two individuals and you are on this road this road and it's because I see two flames here when we begin to pray the hand of God will rest upon you these two individuals you are the only serious Christians in your family and the Lord is showing me that the families are troubled and the reason why he has preserved you in seriousness is because what you represent in the spirit realm is that you are gates he's looking for an opportunity to enter your families and so he has ensured that at least there will be somebody that will give him an opportunity meanwhile you have been asking for intervention no what he's saying to me through you is that as you progressively learn his ways the more space he has in you the more space he will have in your family immediately we begin to pray the hand of the lord will rest on the two of them the flames are already here what the flames oh okay let's pray for two minutes let's pray in tongues for two minutes <laughs> I want something that is flowing. Shiatatae. By Melovicoria sata bakom seveta bakato kamembe soseta ikopa prensu fenatode limbo katai eta mende felabo saibrestola rante fi benifiantos ekom salente ya babos. So bring her, bring her. There's one more person. Rante farahatande fesa. Okay, you can bring the other person. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We still pray, but bring them, bring the two of them. Help me, help me, help me, so that we can continue. As we pray for these ones, those four individuals that He showed me the other time, your parents and ministry, and He wants to bring intelligence reports about why those ministries are struggling. The hand of the Lord begins to rest upon you too. The four of you. The four of you. The four of you. He begins to create capacity for prophetic insight by the Holy Ghost. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. The four of them. 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 His hand becomes strong. He becomes very strong. singing is Eze Bube. You know the song? Eze Bube That's the song they are singing. Can I come down? Sir? Bring him up. I can tell that I know Seed breaks. 
receive grace. He puts a blessing on your life. And he puts a prophetic word upon your lips. When you speak, that which we cease will break in the name of Jesus. And I know is your grace I will sing your praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are many more things that he's doing that I don't even know about. Paul was attempting to create an operational um, division in the Godhead. He said that there are diversities of gifts, but it is one spirit. It means in the Godhead, when it comes to gifts, supernatural ability, it's the Holy Ghost that sits in that office. So one of the things he does when he comes into the room is that he begins to administer gifts. Uh, come, sir. Are you in ministry? Like a pastor, pastor? Or hold my hand. Just, just hold my hand. Thank you, Jesus. So we we'll work together. We we'll work together. When they come, it's you that will lay hands on them. If you keep playing that song, you will keep talking to me. In two minutes, you want to ask him that he will send us a shower of gifts. There are at least 40 individuals that will be in this first shower. At least 40. He will begin on this side of the building and then it will begin to crawl towards that side. So let's pray. Four minutes. Lord, I ask that you will signify your hand upon my life by the deposit of a gift. And I know it's your grace all my days I will see. Everybody pray, it's just me singing. See how far you brought me. I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can hear, and I know. It's your grace, all my days, I will sing your praise. In case there was a gift that you had and it has gone dormant, you can ask him to. He will signify his hand by anointing at least 40 individuals. We are just two minutes away. This is the choir, right? This is the choir. Is this the choir? Yes. From that choir, at least four of you, his hand will rest strongly upon you. In the spirit, there is a trumpet that hangs. There is a prophetic psalmist amongst you. Aha. Uh -huh.
name we are praying okay so everybody can stop praying he has heard us lord holy spirit thank you there were many things you could have said about you but you said introduce me as the living spirit i am the face of god's interaction with men i have done your bidding you are the one who sits on the throne that administers the diversities of the gifts so i'm asking of you that from my right to this left side from the front to the back you will strengthen your hand and gift us don't pray ha! don't pray let's follow the protocols don't pray don't pray don't pray don't pray don't pray don't pray okay you can stop playing you can stop playing. but don't pray don't pray don't pray don't he has heard us he has heard us the bible says whatever you ask when you pray believe that you have received it and then you shall have them so now it's just reception time he has heard us the movement is from here to here and there will be at least 40 tangible touches by the lord when we finish with gifts we will not trust him for recovered offices and finally there will be an impartation of the spirit of faith because they are assigned, we are going out to do a lot for god and we must be quickened to get them done so lord in that fashion help me touch them and anoint them I will count from 1 to 15 and then just break out just break out thank you for answering in Jesus name we are praying so when I count 15 you now start playing that's how he wants us to do it we'll follow him to the letter okay so Holy Ghost now anoint them one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so he's here now ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so begin to play so you start from here and progressively he will move to the building 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 help me find them and anoint them help me find them and anoint them let's keep playing that song that same song she may know of a road telling us rain upon us rain upon us rain upon us let your hand be strong let your hand be strong Woo! now if you find one of them bring them if you find anyone bring that one don't be distracted he's resting upon many of us okay so lord jesus what you are doing over this maiden i ask that you multiply in the building multiply 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 in the name of jesus all about the building all about the building all about the building let grace be released let gifts be embodied let gifts be embodied in the name of jesus why is the choir can i have a people who can sing who can sing has mama prayed for this young lady mama shall you pray for this young lady please pray for her what i see is a fight there's a fight in the spirit there's a fight there's a horn on her head it means by design she's 
a prophet but there's a fight No, no, find your own song. Find your own song. We are free now. Find your own song. Find your own song. Anywhere you see them, just bring them. There are at least 40 of them in the first wave. And he's still anointing. He's still anointing. He's going deep to the back. He's going deep to the back and coming all this way. He says to say that tonight is a night of sending. And they will not send you empty handed. Individuals, chains break, chains break, chains break. No, 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 don't say amen. It's just peace between me and the chains. Chains break in the name of Jesus. Okay, chains break in the name of Jesus. There are six of them. Chains break in the name of Jesus. Chains break in the name of Jesus. When you see them, bring them to me. Chains 
break in the name of Jesus. There are still three of them. There are still three of them. Chains, I command you, break in the name of Jesus. The Lord has chosen these ones. And I came announcing freedom that there will be none bound in this house. Chains, in the name of Jesus, break now. Break, 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 break. In the name of Jesus, let that chain that hinders break. I command you to 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 break in the name of Jesus. Soy katonda sile baruvian teya. Oh, oh, I will bend my be unto the Lord. Nothing hinders you. Nothing hinders you. Nothing hinders you. Nothing hinders you. That line that was drawn in the spirit is erased. Is erased. Free in the name of Jesus. Is that one I'm waiting for? Is that one I'm waiting for? Yes. Yes. Someone bring that one. 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 Amen. Amen. Is that what I'm waiting for? It's a, it's a golden chain. It's a golden chain. It advertises the strength of the oppressor. Bring her. Bring her. Bring her. Bring her. Bring her. Just bring her. advertisement of that spirit gift called the gift of the word of knowledge it's a capacity to work in knowings that are not revealed so Jesus I ask you that this seven of my brethren upon whom your spirit allies giving that gift of the word of knowledge can you help me find these brothers and sisters of mine 
and anoint them. There are four sisters and three brothers. Help me find them and anoint them. 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 Help me find them, Holy Spirit, and anoint them 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 and anoint them. There are four ladies and three young men. Four ladies and three young men. Jesus. 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 I don't know what it is, but there's a flame here. There's a flame here. It means that God has a special messenger amongst them here. Holy Ghost. Can you show me who that person is? Can you show me who that person is? Cause your hand to rest in stronger fashion. There's a flame here. Oh, Jesus. 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 So let me find that one. Cause this flame to rest. What does she do here? What does she do? So we give life to your ordination. 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 There's somebody else here who carries this kind of calling. So Jesus asked that it will spill. And you will help me find that other one too. Among these young ones, you will quicken that anointing. You will quicken that anointing. Okay, bring her up. So he anoints you. He shows you the pathways of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. So I'll round up. I'll round up. Okay. Amen. Can we pray for three minutes? What he said he will give is the spirit of faith. 
Okay, so let me share a testimony with you. Amen. About three years ago, I had just finished meditating. I was not praying. I was just, I have those moments. I just have a scripture in my heart. I'm just rolling it over. And the Lord said to me in Yoruba, He said, Bami, call it. What does that mean? Build with me. So I said, What house? He said, You build your ministry headquarters with me. I didn't tell my wife because at that time, bring her, bring her. The church account stay with me. Bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her. Bring her, bring her, bring her, bring her. The church account had only 80,000. I hope you know you can't bring, build a room with 80,000. So the first person I told was our church graphic designer. So that he will quickly put it into graphic design and post it on our social media pages and God has said we should build. I wanted to make it difficult for myself to not do it. Because now I need to explain to everybody that, oh, it's April 1, it's April Fool, you know that kind of thing. So it was when the design was up and I told my wife, and her first response was, eh, 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 like, you're sure about this thing? Then God now gave times. This is how you should build. This is how you should get money. This is how it should be done. Well, cut the long story short. Was built two and a half years. No debt, nothing. Many of you are going to perfect destiny in a shorter period of time. The currency is the spirit of faith. Are you with me? What the spirit of faith does is that it gives you capacity to draw the life from God that is required to do what he wants you to do against human reasoning. How many of us want that? All right, so ask him. When we are prayed for three minutes, he will give us a sign. The sign is that in tangible fashion, it will cause the spirit to rest on just six amongst us. When that is done, I'll just pray a general prayer, then I'll take my seat. I'm still preaching in Oshogo tomorrow morning. So, um, you will let me go to sleep. I'll be now. I'll be. But if he invites me next day, I'll come again. Uh, so, if he invites me next day, I'll come again. But he doesn't have to invite me. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, pray for three minutes. Pray for three minutes. Lord, this thing you have called me to do, give me the faith for it. Give me the faith for it. Give me the faith for it. Why we are praying this prayer? If you came into the building sick in any area of your life, you can also place your hand there. As I began to pray, I sensed that there was a release of healing virtue. God is dealing with all kinds of sicknesses and disease and there will be instant testimonies. So you want to place your hand to represent that healing part and ask the Lord to take it away because now he heals alongside. And all we see how great how great our God how great our Oh, 
sing how great one more minute oh, above the shoulder someone is here with the pain that has stayed that long someone came about three individuals with difficulty in breathing your chest is always congested yes the Lord is also signaling in my right thigh somebody has had sustained muscular pain there's even someone with a repeatedly um, dislocating shoulder joint I don't know who that person is there are organ recoveries that are currently going on Jesus Jesus a swell on the lower abdominal right side thank you Lord Jesus an accidented right leg and the knee comes back with repeated pain the Lord says he's taking it away uh, there are a lot of things that he's doing there's someone in the congregation that has even been diagnosed with hepatitis B and if you do a test of Monday morning what they will tell you is that you are free this morning yes yes to you it was a death sentence but the Lord right now right now there is a, a there is a, a superimposition of the superior blood of Jesus and whatever the blood disease is maybe I should encourage you someone who walked into my office about four months ago abused and abused into HIV now she wants to get married and you've done the first blood test says each other so when she came to my office we prayed like like we've just prayed now and she went back home I said she wanted to go and do a test and I said it's not necessary you will not do HIV test normally if there's nothing that is wrong so why should you go and do a test because there's nothing wrong with you he said, well, it's a prerequisite for marriage. I said, no, when the time for marriage comes, if you want to waste money, do it. So after about six weeks, she didn't have the faith to wait. She said, I'm going to do it tomorrow. She said, you have money. Go and do the test. She's getting married today, Saturday. She'll marry today. There's no trace. Your internal organs were created 
by the breath of God. Are you with me? Jesus has given us what the hub of the bread. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So whatever the element is, we cause the roots of it and we superimpose the life of Christ on it. And I decree, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Even if you are standing for someone, there's a young lady around here. She can come. Your mom is the one that has been sick for a season. Just come. Come. She's around that place. Okay. Keep coming. Keep coming. How long? She can't walk well. How long? Five years. That's the one I'm looking for. I'll pray for everybody. What's wrong with her? No, what's wrong? What's the five year thing about? Stroke. Okay, everybody hold my hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Little Church, can you stretch your hands to them? What we are decreeing simply is health. All kinds of miracles here. All kinds of miracles. We rebuke the hand of him that afflicts. We rebel against body malfunctions. Whether the sicknesses be spiritual or physical, we cause the root of sickness and I establish in health in the name of Jesus. Let pains disappear. Let masses dissolve. Let malfunctioning organs be replaced. Let blood diseases be healed. In the name of Jesus. We decree recovery even to damaged wombs. And we call for children. We call for children. In the name of Jesus. Hearts. Lungs, kidneys, liver, blood, brains, alive in health in the name of Jesus. We speak to all kinds of paralysis. Let those limbs recover. Let those limbs, we give life tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus, I want to ask for those that you are sending to labor. They have acknowledged the insufficiency of faith. We ask that you will, right now, give the spirit of faith. Don't pray. It's a simple prayer. As a sign that you have responded to us, you will advertise the tangibility of this impartation on just six individuals, and I will drop the mic. So I ask that you go from one to the other. All of these ones who have indicated that they feel staggered by what you have called them to do, I ask for an impartation of the spirit of faith now. You can stop playing. Now, now, Holy Spirit. As you advance, I ask that you cause your hand to rest tangibly on just six. That will be my sign that you have perfected this operation. You will go back home. You will find the wisdom to do. You will find the company to do. You will find the favor to do. He's still moving. His hand will rest tangibly on only six. On only six. On only six. That's three. On only six. He will touch everyone, but he will be very strong on just six of you. So that's three. It means his hand is still moving. His hand is still moving. Holy Ghost, the spirit of faith, the spirit of faith. 
that no one staggers at your promises that against hope they will hope keep anointing them keep anointing them keep anointing them keep anointing them okay the process is still on when it tangibly anoints the sixth person i've dropped the microphone everything within the next two minutes so keep anointing them keep anointing them keep anointing them we release the spirit of faith in the house we release the spirit of faith we release the spirit of faith your doubts are quenched yes your doubts are quenched 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 and for some of you even by daybreak god will give a sign a sign a sign that there will be a kind of big breakthrough in line with what he has called you to do it may be some favor given or some finance released in the name of jesus it's not done there's still a sixth person that i'm waiting for okay 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 now amen you came here and your family is heavily indebted raise your hand the lord is saying that he will grant favor to short debts father such as i have received by mercy to occasion debt cancellations debt favor that becomes finance for debt repayment i decree that these debts that you have revealed that you will deal with tonight we activate the erasure in the name of jesus by the twin forces of favor and supernatural supply i decree that the weights of debts on this family is removed in the name of jesus removed in the name of jesus removed in the name of jesus thank you father oh in your presence stop your key oh in your presence there's healing divine for no other power can heal, Lord, but I. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. <laughs> Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. In this place, only Father of mercy Thou art welcome in this place. I began to sing that song because there's a gift of the presence that god is giving and the numbers are multiplying holy spirit thou art welcome in this place you will mantle them like a garment And that minstrel in the choir 
that you have ordained for a fresh weight of your presence I ask that you will rest upon them 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 like a garment you will wrap yourselves around them <laughs> you will wrap yourselves around them you will wrap yourself around them you will wrap yourself around them your presence will no longer be a mental thing they can touch it now they can feel it so strong upon them holy spirit holy spirit you are welcome to clothe them you will clothe them you will clothe them you will clothe them and it will not just be here even as they go they will feel you Kamino Rose Hanataya Ilibenote Shombe Yetai Now I dwell come in this place Thank you Father In Jesus name we are praying So Father we thank you for your hand that is upon us we thank you because your touch will not be transient it will remain thank you because the doors of knowing your spirit are now opened in greater dimensions you will teach us your ways and we will work in your truth your realities thank you because we will do more with you Thank you because you will teach us not to grieve your spirit. You will teach us not to quench your spirit. We will live right. We will talk right. We will associate right so that he will be strong inside us. You will separate us onto this fellowship with your spirit. We thank you. Because we are that generation that together with the holy spirit will 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 do your beating we will serve no order we will serve you our bodies are your temple you will live here comfortably thank you for that help that comes upon us it's your house it's your home hey baby am i baby by prayer Ah, ni, ni, Lara. We thank you. Blessed be your name, oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you.